This is my chance to finally do some work that actually means something. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at the most captivating and distinguished acting in films released from 2014 to 2023. You're in the middle of the world. Number 20, Brendan Fraser, The Whale. Brendan Fraser's stardom had sadly declined through the years. Despite his range with genre movies, his incredible return to form was a Darren Aronofsky drama. I hate everyone. The Whale follows a morbidly obese recluse's struggle to reconnect with the daughter he abandoned. Even with heavy prosthetics, Fraser put on a lot of weight for the role. Equally impressive is how he humanizes the self-destructive Charlie with empathy and tragedy. Ellie, look at me. Who would want me to be a part of their life? He subtly expresses the dying man's self-loathing and remorse before it all explodes. The emotional roller coaster earned Fraser many accolades, including the Academy Award for Best Actor. Certainly, The Whale was a demanding vehicle for several fresh talents. Fraser still commanded the ship in one of the decade's great acting comebacks. People are amazing. Number 19, Rosamund Pike, Gone Girl. After many notable supporting roles, Rosamund Pike truly arrived as a Hollywood headliner with Gone Girl. It's you. You. Pike plays Amy Dunn, whose husband is believed to be responsible for her sudden disappearance. But this missing person case and Amy herself are not as they seem. Meticulously stage your crime scene with just enough mistakes to raise the specter of doubt. As shocking as Gone Girl consistently is, Pike leads dramatic tension alongside the psychological. Flashbacks show a strong-willed woman slowly unraveling under a dysfunctional marriage. The twists reveal a crafty femme fatale with a dangerous plan. He tied me up like a dog. And then he'd punish me. This chilling evolution was named the highlight of David Fincher's enthralling thriller. With Pike soon riding her Oscar nomination into a major career as a lead, she's not going anywhere. I've killed for you. Who else can say that? Number 18, Song Kang-ho, Parasite. One of South Korea's most celebrated actors is in top form in Bong Joon-ho's Parasite. Sung Kang Ho plays Kim Gi Tak, the patriarch of an impoverished family that infiltrates a wealthy estate by becoming servants. The Kim's increasingly bizarre hustle inspires great performances throughout the all star cast. But Gi Tech is the heart of the outfit. The shame of his failure and the realization of social inequality drive him to one of the most devastating breakdowns in modern film. Song conveys it all with his distinct, reliable charm and subtle range. <laughs> The sensational parasite propelled him into a household name around the world. Even for his many established fans, Song gave one of the defining performances of his career. Number 17, Kristen Stewart, Spencer. Hello, Darren. Is everybody there? Well, apart from the Majesty, yeah. Perfect. American superstar Kristen Stewart has been renowned for indie and art projects for years. She really showed the full measure of her talent as Diana, Princess of Wales, and Spencer. A fictional Windsor family, Christmas delved into the maddening pressures from the reluctant noble's title and in-laws. It was also very candid about her struggles with eating disorders. Stewart grounded the intense psychodrama with all the grace and agony that defined this glamorous, tragic figure. It seems there's circling just me. Not you. Just me. Perhaps it's because I always take care to close my curtains. Diana's own staff praised the performance's authenticity. Stewart was nominated for an Oscar and showered with Critics Association Awards. The whole world took notice of her doing justice to Princess Diana, as well as the burdens of womanhood and public life at large. If I stop being really silly in the next few days, just tell me. I'll only believe it if it's you who tells me. Number 16, Andrew Garfield, Tick, Tick, Boom. Only after his death at age 35 was Jonathan Larson recognized as a revolutionary genius on Broadway. And what exactly do I have to show for myself? <sighs> Happy birthday. Andrew Garfield's portrayal in Tick, Tick, Boom gave his life the grandeur it deserved. The adaptation of Larson's autobiographical musical even showcased the beloved actor's explosive singing skills. Actions speak louder, louder, than, louder than. 
His comedic and dramatic range may not have been as much of a revelation, but Garfield still managed to exceed fans' expectations on those fronts. The show-stopping performance encapsulated Larson's sacrificial dedication to his art and giving a voice to the marginalized. It also won Garfield a Golden Globe and many other awards as an iconic display of just how versatile his talent is. Till I get it right when I burn. Number 15, Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon. Lily Gladstone was well regarded for her smaller projects when she joined Killers of the Flower Moon. Martin Scorsese's immense western and crime epic boasts a seasoned cast to hold the drama together. My medicine you gave me. What was in it show me gussy? Gladstone still stands out as an oil heiress at the center of a conspiracy to claim her family's fortune. She plays the real-life Molly Cobb with an enchanting charisma. Her committed portrayal of diabetes before proper medication is suspenseful enough, but as the violence escalates, Molly's grief and terror maintain the humanity in this chapter of injustice against Native Americans. It was always sad. Always. Much of the film's sweeping acclaim was directed at Gladstone, delivering what is already being named one of the most important performances of the 2020s. You talk too much. Number 14, Daniel Kaluuya, Judas and the Black Messiah. British actor Daniel Kaluuya first captivated America with Jordan Peele's Get Out. I can't move. But he achieved a greater esteem for playing a controversial American icon in Judas and the Black Messiah. That's the difference between revolution and the candy-coated facade of gradual reform. The thrilling biopic follows an FBI informant's infiltration of the Black Panther Party. The spotlight is nonetheless commanded by Deputy Chairman Fred Hampton, recognized for his left-wing political activism and rhetoric until his assassination. The Black Panthers, the Young Lords, and the Young Patriots are forming a rainbow coalition of oppressed brothers and sisters of every color. Kaluuya projects that larger-than-life persona with a fiery intelligence between quieter moments of humanity. His vocal, physical, and psychological immersion into the role won nearly every major award for Best Supporting Actor. If anything, Kaluuya leads Judas and the Black Messiah's complex representation of an often misunderstood movement and man. Anywhere there's people, there's power. Number 13, J.K. Simmons, Whiplash. The key is to just relax. Don't worry about the numbers. Don't worry about what the other guys are thinking. You're here for a reason. J.K. Simmons' sprawling filmography has always made him synonymous with lovably abrasive figures. With Terrence Fletcher in Whiplash, he truly turned that role into a work of art. The volatile jazz orchestra conductor pushes his musicians to their limits by any means necessary. Were you rushing or were you dragging? Answer! Rushing. Fletcher's progression from encouragement to verbal, if not physical, abuse downplays ethics in the name of art. Few actors can sell the appeal of such twisted mentorship like Simmons. His pitch-perfect performance is a suite of catchy, terrifying tonal shifts. Beyond sweeping the award circuit, Fletcher gained recognition as a pop culture sensation and Simmons' definitive role. It also launched the already prolific character actor's career into double time. There are no two words in the English language more harmful than good job. Number 12, Amy Adams, Arrival. Amy Adams leads Arrival as Dr. Louise Banks, a linguist tasked with establishing communication with alien visitors. It's impossible to translate from an audio file. I would need to be there to interact with them. This delicate process not only explores the philosophy of language and sentience, but eventually meditates on the very nature of reality. Human. Human. Adams keeps these grand ideas down to earth with the passion and terror of scientific inquiry. She also sells incredible plot twists with the most human qualities of love and grief. Arrival was praised as a whole for pulling off the daunting concept of a metaphysical sci-fi blockbuster, but Adams was singled out for anchoring the deep emotion in its intelligence. While she has always been a noted dramatic talent, many consider Dr. Banks to be the role of a lifetime. If you could see your whole life from start to finish, would you change things? Number 11, Chadwick Boseman, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. From Black Panther to great historical figures, Chadwick Boseman's tragically brief career leaves an endless legacy, but the full caliber of his talent was revealed shortly after his passing with Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I'd just like to be inside your head for five minutes just to see how you think. You know, you got more shit piled up and mixed up in there than the devil got sinners. The drama traces trumpeter Levy Green's collapse under the pressure of his life and ambition during a recording session with a blues legend. Green himself is fictional, but represents a whole generation of artists destroyed by hubris and injustice. Bad luck? Hey. What do I care about bad luck? You talking simple. 
I ain't had nothing but bad luck all my life. Couldn't get no worse. What the hell I care about some bad luck? Hell, I eat it every day for breakfast. Postman projects that with a theatrical intensity, underlined by quiet desperation. The performance received unanimous acclaim and many accolades, with some solemnly saying it would have changed the trajectory of the actor's career. Ma Rainey nonetheless announced Postman as a once-in-a-generation talent. Number 10, Joaquin Phoenix, Joker. I don't think you ever really hear me. You just ask the same questions every week. How's your job? Are you having any negative thoughts? All I have are negative thoughts. One of the most iconic supervillains inspiring genuinely great acting isn't new. One of cinema's greatest actors still raised the role at a new prestige in Todd Phillips' Joker. Joaquin Phoenix depicts Arthur Fleck as an aspiring comedian struggling with poverty and psychosis. As Gotham's cruelty drives him over the edge, Joker becomes a symbol of revolution at its ugliest. The film's themes have been deeply debated, though there's no debating Phoenix's commitment. You were the only one that was ever nice to me. He lost 52 pounds for the role, seamlessly carrying a madman between heartbreaking tragedy and terrifying brutality. This performance alongside Heath Ledger's made the Joker the second role ever to win two Oscars. While it may just be an affirmation of Phoenix's brilliance, Joker showed how bold genre movies can get. Everybody is awful these days. It's enough to make anyone crazy. Number 9. Olivia Colman, The Favorite By the late 2010s, veteran British talent Olivia Colman was on track to become Hollywood royalty. Did you just look at me? Did you? Look at me! Look at me! How dare you! Close your eyes! Her ultimate ascension was in taking British royalty down a peg in The Favourite. Yorgos Lanthimos's dark comedy satirizes the vindictive culture and politics within the court of Queen Anne. The Queen herself is depicted as petty and oblivious, with scandalous speculations about her sexuality. Despite this irreverence, Coleman delivers genuine charm and grace. That is, until her more human moments marry the tragic with the absurd. Stay a while! No, take the day off, I command it! This perfectly composed performance won the Lioness's share of the award showered on the favorite. Just as the film inspired a trend of boldly subversive period pieces, it established Coleman as a favorite actor of her generation. You shall speak when asked to. Number 8. Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer Christopher Nolan may have achieved his own technical breakthrough with his blockbuster biopic on J. Robert Oppenheimer. A bomb, Alvarez. A bomb. But Killian Murphy held the equally monumental task of humanizing the father of the atomic bomb. He certainly nailed the physicality and charisma of a true innovator in a time of war. All minds have to see the whole task to contribute efficiently. Poor security may cost us the race, inefficiency will. The Germans know more than us anyway. Of course, the realities of his potentially apocalyptic innovation take their psychological toll. Oppenheimer depicts a man conflicted by his own ambition and pressured by the modern world he helped usher in. Murphy is the very soul of that drama. The epic spectacle of everything else in Nolan's masterpiece holds little for one of the most complex performances in an increasingly distinguished acting career. But a chain reaction that would destroy the entire world? Mm, I remember it well. What of it? I believe we did. Number 7. Kate Blanchett, Tar. Kate Blanchett has dominated the last decade alone with vehicles like Carol. What a strange girl you are. Why? Flung out of space. While there's nothing surprising about her carrying every scene of a two and a half hour long movie, she is still most of what makes Tar so hypnotic. Time is the thing. Uh -huh. Time is, is the essential piece of uh, interpretation. You cannot start without me. The symphonic slow burner follows renowned composer Lydia Tarr as she gradually loses everything to scandal. Blanchett conducts that process with almost unreal charisma then a harrowing fall from grace. You're confused. <laughs> it's my star! Her subtle gestures and emotional commitment truly shaped the meticulous drama. Tar's lead was naturally the star of the award season. It's the kind of solo performance that would distinguish any classical actor. For Blanchett, it may just be the definitive role of a legendary talent. After all, a soul selects her own society. But remember, the flip side of that selection closes the valves of one's attention. Number 6. Michael Keaton, Birdman some could argue that Michael Keaton's talents was once overshadowed by his classic genre movies. He effectively disputed that myth by embracing it in Alejandro Iñárritu's Birdman. Keaton was the only choice to play Regan Thompson, a former superhero actor who tries to reinvent himself on the stage. He handles the meta and dark comedy with his usual impeccable technique, especially given the movie's notorious long takes. In portraying Regan's personal and psychological turmoil, though, Keaton truly soars. None of this even matters. I don't exist. I don't exist. 
the heavily accoladed performance did indeed reinvent his career. He went on to lead a number of award-winning dramas while making a comeback to superhero movies. Still, no project encompasses his incredible range quite like Birdman. Leave me alone. You were a movie star, remember? Pretentious, but happy. I wasn't happy. Number 5. Francis McDormand, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri Francis McDormand has always risen above conventions as a character actor. I got nothing to arrest you for. Not yet, you ain't. There's still something truly special about her character at the head of Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. This lengthy title refers to a chain of billboards that Mildred Hayes commissioned to condemn the inefficient investigation into her daughter's murder. Could pull blood from every man and boy in this town over the age of eight. That certainly plays to the no-nonsense attitude that McDormand always plays to perfection. At the same time, she carries Mildred's anger and grief with a force that drives the film's urgency. McDormand rode her second Oscar win into some of the most daring projects of her career, landing yet another Oscar for Nomadland. Of course, Three Billboards stands out for promoting the full depth of her ability. You ain't trying to make me believe in reincarnation or something, are you? Because you're pretty, but you ain't her. Number 4. Jake Gyllenhaal, Nightcrawler As a freelance photojournalist with a macabre eye, Lou Bloom represents the darkest interests in modern culture. I understand. I'm a very, very quick learner. You will be seeing me again. Jake Gyllenhaal is one of the few actors capable of carrying such a slimy character with irresistible charm. He starved himself 30 pounds lighter to convey Bloom's desolate disposition. He still delivers the snappy delivery and steely gaze of an unfeeling hustler. It's been cited as a highly authentic portrayal of a high-functioning sociopath, though Bloom is never formally diagnosed. The true price of any item is what somebody's willing to pay for it. You want something, and I want you. The award-winning Gyllenhaal simply encompasses the horror of American entrepreneurship being consumed by desperation and sensationalism. As deeply as Nightcrawler still crawls under the audience's skin, that's mostly for Gyllenhaal delivering one of his most intensely realized performances. You filmed him dying. Hey, that's what I do. It's my job. I like to say that if you're seeing me, you're having the worst day of your life. Number 3. Mahershala Ali, Moonlight Best Picture winner Moonlight shows how big of an impact a small movie can have. Mahershala Ali showed the impact of a seemingly small role. Juan is a drug dealer who bonds with the film's protagonist as a child. I gotta get you home, little man. This paternalistic relationship influences a coming of age defined by crime and desperation to be recognized. It also sets Moonlight's complicated tone about connection in a despondent community. Though Juan doesn't live past the first act, Ali's sternness and sensitivity define the figure's significance. The character actor immediately became a household name. His Academy Award win settled him as one of the most sought-after charismas in Hollywood. More importantly, Ali's brief appearance in Moonlight epitomizes the movie's revolutionary portrayal of race and manhood. At some point, you gotta decide for yourself who you want to be. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. Number 2. Tony Collette, Hereditary Films like Ari Aster's Hereditary popularized horror as a dramatic art form, with Tony Collette at the heart of that. I love you so, so much. Oh God, I love you so much. <laughs> she plays Annie Graham, who is driven mad with grief over the deaths of her mother and daughter. Her breakdown after a seance, in fact, reveals a horrific conspiracy surrounding her lineage. I never wanted to be your mother. What makes the film so nightmarish is how it supernaturalizes the real horrors of trauma and family. Colette leads these themes with a visceral balance between unhinged terror and dramatic expression. While stigma against horror limited major award buzz, critics hailed the performance as one of the best in Colette's distinguished career. It was key to Hereditary breaking that stigma to make elevated horror a major vehicle for respected actors. Well, now your sister is dead! And I know you miss her, and I know it was an accident, and I know you're in pain, and I wish I could take that away for you. I wish I could shield you! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Carrie Mulligan, Promising Young Woman, an icon of feminist drama, was affirmed by a morally complex form of femme fatale. Can you guess what every woman's worst nightmare is? Adam Driver, Marriage Story. A breakout superstar explores the full range of humanity through a bitter divorce. Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead! Dead like if I can guarantee Henry would be okay. I hope you get an illness and they get hit by a car and die. <sighs> Regina King, if Beale Street could talk, the pain and steadfastness of a desperate mother revealed the extent of this talent's intensity. I know you pay for the lies you tell. You sent a man to jail. Ethan Hawke, first reformed. A priest's crisis of faith confirmed one of the great character actors of his era. Well, somebody has to do something. 
It's the earth that hangs in the balance. Well, what if this is his plan? What if we just can't see it? You think God wants to destroy his creation? Alicia Vikander, Ex Machina. One of the decade's defining stars broke out with the chilling evolution of a calculating machine. What would you like to know? Whatever comes into your head. Well, you already know my name. And you can see that I'm a machine. Would you like to know how old I am? Sure. I'm one. One what? One year or one day? One. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Michelle Yeoh – Everything Everywhere All at Once The versatile Michelle Yeoh has shown herself to be capable of playing anything. She proved that just with Everything Everywhere All at Once. The genre-defying epic follows Evelyn Kwan Wong's journey across countless universes to stop her daughter's plot to destroy all existence. This wild concept was driven by Yo's mastery of comedy and action. At the same time, her emotional scope anchored grand themes of existential angst and family dysfunction. We made a sacred promise. The performance was hailed as Yo's magnum opus, winning scores of awards. Ki Hui Kwan also rightly got a lot of publicity for his Oscar-winning comeback in Everything Everywhere. But Yo's was a dynamic performance that defined both an era and an iconic career. And why? No matter what, I still want to be here with you. What are your favorite film performances in recent memory? Take the spotlight in the comments. We could call this the critical moment. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.